guys how are you so i figured i would start this week's vlog off as more of a school vlog i figured i would vlog more of my first week back to school literally first week of my second semester of grad school if you guys are new to my channel and you don't already know i am in an acute care DMP program. This is literally my second week of the second semester. Um, class started a couple days ago. I'm an online student, um, if you guys don't already know. So yeah, I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys. I actually, bruh, literally just sat down, started talking to you guys, and somebody wanted to crank up their big loud truck outside. So anyways, let's go ahead and let them pull on out. All right, so they're gone. So yes, um, I actually have work tonight, but I got up not too long ago so I could eat before I leave and then I wanted to do a couple things with class so I figured what better way to start this vlog off than to sit down and talk to you guys. If you guys have not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so. Make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video and hit the little bell so you get notifications every time I post a new video. So I want this vlog to be a school vlog like I said. So this week is going to be nothing but school related topics. I'm going to talk to you guys about how I stay organized. Um, so first and foremost, we're going to jump into my calendar which you guys see behind me i'm going to show you guys how i am staying organized with my classes so i'm taking two classes this semester I'm taking a pharmacology class which is a three credit a three credit class and i'm taking a finance class which is a two credit class so um i like to you bruh <laughs> don't you guys don't even ask me any questions about this right here okay don't ask me any questions okay <laughs> anyways so over here you guys will see my big wall calendar this is how i stay organized with my life between this and the calendar on my phone so let's jump into september because it is already almost September so I'm going to show you guys how I stay organized with my classes. So what I like to do is as you guys can see I have things already written out for my pharmacology class when I have discussions due, when I have exams and I have that written out in one color and then what I like to do for my other class for example my finance class here there's some sort of systems paper that's due so I have that written out in a separate color so I just like to take a pen two separate pens and write in two separate colors of course and just go ahead and get your syllabus get your calendar whatever they give you for school and go ahead and write everything out on your calendar so I'll go through the whole semester so from August, September, October, November to December and I have everything written out on my calendar. So that's the first thing that I like to do when classes start, especially being a online student and working full time. I need to know what I have due, when I'm working, when tests are, like I need to know what I'm doing so I can organize my life. So that's the first thing that I like to do. The second thing that I like to do as soon as class starts or as soon as classes open up because I'm an online student, I like to go ahead and get organized. So next I'm gonna show you what I like to do on my laptop to stay organized. So, so first and foremost, yes, you guys already know I got those flamingos back there. Now yes, my desktop might look a little funny right now because I'm doing a time machine backup, which I highly recommend for you Apple users. I can't really speak on any other um, desktop because I only use Apple, but any, any way that you guys can do a backup on your laptop, I highly recommend you guys do that before you get really involved in your semester because God forbid your computer were to crash or anything crazy, you don't want to lose all your information. So I am currently doing a backup and I back up all my information on a external hard drive. These are very, very handy because you don't want to keep all of your information stored on your laptop and your laptop crashes and boom, everything's gone. Definitely recommend you guys get an external hard drive. So anyways, back to the main subject. So I always like to come through and create 
folders. You guys can ignore some of these. <clears throat> so I will create a folder. This says fall 2018. And then I just like to go through and have my classes here. So I have my finance class and I have my pharmacology class and this is all within the semester. And then I just go in and, ju and then just add a couple things, whatever I need quick access to. And of course, as the semester goes on, I will add more things to the folder. And this is farm. And as you can see, I've already got a couple things in here that I've been working on. A couple journals, my calendar, and then a couple things from week one that I've already started working on. So yeah, this is my main way of getting organized within the first week so I don't start feeling overwhelmed. These journal assignments I've actually already started working on because it helps me to get little things out of the way. So this journal, you guys, is not even due until the first week of September and boom, it is already complete. And I do this in a Word document, you guys, because you could put everything in a Word document, check your spelling, make sure you have your references in APA format, literally everything. And then you can copy and paste it in the necessary place that you need to within your class and then it's completely done. So I do it in a Word document and then just save it and I'll upload it at the necessary time. So yeah, that's like the first, my eye was itching. So yeah, that's like the first thing that I like to do when my classes open up and I did the same thing last semester. That's like the first thing that I like to do to get myself organized. I get my calendar, my syllabus, whatever the teacher gives you like that first opening day. And this goes the same way for on-campus classes. Like I did the same thing in my undergrad. When I went to school that first day, they give you all of this information and you need to be able to condense it and help yourself to not feel like you're treading water. So that's, um, that's how I like to get myself organized like the first day of class. So yeah, um, I'm going to just make this vlog my first week of my second semester, like I said. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy this and let me know if you like vlogs like this. I can make them more school focused. That's kind of what I wanted to aim this vlog like. Um, I know you guys like my weekly vlogs or like my life vlogs or whatever, but a lot of times I'm basically just going back and forth to work. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit. So make sure you guys let me know in the comments section if you guys are kind of feeling this or what your thoughts are on it or whatever. I will be headed out to LA at the end of this month. So I will um, do a recap of that. So I don't know actually how long this vlog will be, but yeah, I am going to now go ahead and get ready for work because I go to work tonight, but I wanted to go ahead and say hello, start my vlog intro, let you guys know what this vlog was going to be about, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi guys, good afternoon. How are you? So today I am sitting down, relaxing, chilling. Got my Eskimo fleece robe on. I'm always cold, so I wanted to throw this on. I am going to be sitting out and doing schoolwork today. I am going to work on one of my journal club entries for pharmacology. And then I'm also going to be listening to a PowerPoint for my finance class. So these are the two things that I'm going to knock out today. So I figured what better way to do that than to have you guys join me for the vlog. So that's what we're working on today for school. So I wanted to have you guys here with me so we can just sit and chit chat. And yeah, that's what we're going to be working on today. So the first thing is, um, like I said, the journal club entry. So I have three journal club entries for pharmacology. They're not even due until September, October, and November. The one for September, which is number one, is already out of the way. I showed you guys that earlier. And then number two is not due until October, but I'm already halfway finished with that one. Um, and I like to get these little frivolous type things over with so I can focus more on the main heavily weighted content. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. So I figured I would show you guys what I was working on. 
So right now, this second journal entry is just going through and talking about whether your state has a prescription drug monitoring program. So what I like to do is just go through and break up my responses because usually each journal club has at least three different sections. So I like to go through and make sure I break it up into each required part so I can make sure I'm answering everything. So that's why right now everything looks kind of jumbled. But once I'm completely finished, I will go through and it will all look like one cohesive discussion. And then I have my references down here on a separate document. So basically all I'm doing is I'm going to go through and make sure I get everything together and formulate my words, read back through it, make sure everything sounds okay, make sure I run through spell check, and then yeah, I'll go ahead and have it saved and ready to submit by the actual deadline. So that's basically all I'm working on right now. So we were basically given an article that we had to read along with answering the question about our state. So the particular state that I live in, you guys know, um, well some of you guys know that I currently live in Virginia. So it was interesting to find out about Virginia's prescription drug monitoring program and a little bit about the NARX care system that providers have to use. Um, as far as going through and identifying patients that are on opioids and how health professionals have to go through and they're actually automatically enrolled into the PDMP, Prescription Drug Monitoring Program, and also how um, the system is kind of used to identify patients who are on opioids, how you can identify patients who are kind of doctor shopping or going around from provider to provider kind of seeking opioids and it's kind of a way to eliminate that system. Law enforcement actually uses this system as well. It's a way to kind of eliminate drug diversion so it was kind of interesting to learn about um, my particular state system. Um, and then after reading the particular article um, I had to answer the question about what surprised me most about PDMPs statewide. So Missouri and DC actually do not have PDMPs. So that was interesting. Um, and then I also had to answer the question about what was a key learning point for me. So that is the section that I'm working on now. which helps me to make sure my references are in APA format. It's a service that's offered by Chegg. It is $9.99 a month if you want the pro version. It allows you to create your citations, save your citations, um, create projects, which can save your citations under that project for you to come back to later. And then it will also look at your papers as well if you um, upload your paper or copy and paste portions of your paper into the service. Um, and it's called EasyBib. And it has been very, very helpful. I used it a lot my first semester when I had a lot of papers that were due for one of my classes. I don't remember right offhand. Um, so I'm going to show it to you now and I'm going to show you how it works because I'm actually in the process of creating a citation for a article that I was using. So I'm going to show you exactly how it works right now. So um, I hope you guys don't mind the way that I'm actually filming. When I like to show you guys things on the computer, I usually like to actually record my screen. But I'm not going to go through that process right now, so I hope you guys can really get a good view of how things are looking. This service, like I said, is called EasyBib. You can see it up here. It is a Chegg service, 
and I do have the pro version as you guys can see right there and it gives you the option to use all of these formats up here MLA 7 and 8 I don't know what those are um, but I always use APA so you choose your website um, or your source type so website journal book blah 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 Bible blog all these so I am actually about to cite a journal here so I'm gonna click journal See if I turn my screen down a little if that helps for you guys. What you want to do is put your source in. So I am actually going to copy and paste my source because I have a journal. I put the DOI number in there. I'm going to click cite. So here is the article that I was using. It's called Associations Between Statewide Prescription Drug Monitoring Programs, PDM for short. For physician pattern, blah, 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 opioid, yeah, 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 here we go. So anyways, it's going to automatically fill in everything that it automatically finds. Anything missing, it will automatically prompt you. And you can fill that in for yourself. I'm going to click continue. So everything is automatically filled in. So I have all of my authors here, my title. I am citing the full article. It says abstract only. I clicked no. So I have my volume, the year published, all of the page numbers, the DOI. Uh, let me go back and see if there's an issue here, but I don't think so. So yeah, so that'll be blank. So it was volume 76 from the journal. So there's nothing that I need to update. So I'm going to go ahead and click update citation and boom, here we are already ready to go. And then also if I was actually writing a paper and I needed my in-text citation, I could click in-text citation and then this is how I would put this as an in-text citation in my paper if I needed that option, which I don't. So I am just going to take what I need, copy that, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to put it down here so I will have it for later when I'm ready to format my whole thing. So boom, there you go. APA format for your references. Everything is APA. Everything. Literally everything. You will, you will get so tired of hearing APA. Literally, you'll be saying APA in your sleep. But anyways, this is a really good service for you guys to use. There is a plagiarism and grammar checker up here as well. So you can paste portions of your paper in here or you can upload your whole paper from a, from a document or from Google Drive. I just wanted to show you guys that as well. So yeah, this is really, 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 really handy, you guys. I just wanted to show you. I'm sorry, there's like a bunch of ads that always pop up on the sides there. But a really, really awesome service. Trust me. The pro version is very very handy so yeah I just wanted to show you guys that and this is the actual article that I've been reading and the one that I just cited it is on the association between PDMs and physician patterns of prescribing opioid analgesics for patients who have non-cancer chronic pain and as you guys could see, there was a lot involved with this one journal topic because you're in grad school, they expect you to write a lot. They expect you to be able to formulate everything you want to say and not just, you know, one or two liners per question. They really want you to engage. They really want you to have enough to promote a discussion because you're placed into groups and they really want to see a constant dialogue between you and your group members. So it's gone are the days where you can just say, yeah, well, I enjoyed this article. This is what I thought, blah, blah, blah. No, they really expect you to pull out everything that you're thinking and really be able to have an appropriate adult dialogue with your group members. So that's why this whole thing is like so in depth. So I am completely finished with this. So I'm moving on to my financial organizations within the U.S. healthcare system. That's the umbrella term for the class. I just call it finance for short. 
So I'm going to listen to this PowerPoint. Well, I'm going to open the PowerPoint, but I'm going to listen to the lecture that goes along with it. And it's only like 20 minutes long. So I'm going to listen to this and it is on comparing health systems. You've heard that uh, the majority of personal bankruptcies are caused from um, health care costs, uh, especially related to cancer diagnoses. Um, and it puts us in direct, at a direct disadvantage, competitive disadvantage with other countries. Um, so if uh, that information is not enough, I just wanted to come on and say hello to you guys. I am getting ready to do some schoolwork. I am about to knock out two PowerPoints on pharmacokinetics and dynamics and some dosing complications that you can encounter as a provider. So I have all my things here. I've got all of my writing utensils, highlighter. I've got my notebook here for supplemental note taking. And so yeah, I've got my water. So I can stay hydrated and I will be spending about the next two hours on these PowerPoints because each one is about an hour long. So I'm going to knock these out and then I, that only leaves me with one left. So yeah, I'm going to get these over with. There, nothing interesting is really going to be happening besides me listening to these PowerPoints. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog series. I just wanted to vlog a little bit of my first week back into the swing of things with school. Like I said, this has been my first week back into my second semester of my DMP program. And let me know in the comment section if you guys like these kind of vlogs, what you guys want to see me talk about next. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. It's the big red button down below. And then make sure you hit the little bell right next to it so you get notifications every time I post a new video and I hope that I will see you guys in my next video and I love you guys as always and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!